So hello Norwich Space students, um, I will really miss you this year. Not doing Norwich for the first year in about 17 years is quite tricky really. Um, but I will miss you and um, I hope you're all well. And um, I'm hoping that this lesson is going to give you inspiration to um, have a bit of fun playing the bass viol and playing some fulcare. And this is from um, a piece with three movements, an allemand, a courant, and a saraband. And I thought it'd be lovely to do something in three parts and give you the, um, the play along. So this lesson is for um, the top part of the allemand. And um, there is a play along of the second and third parts. Oh, and a performance of all three as well on, on YouTube with, with this link. And the, um, the music is at the, the bottom on a link as well, on a SharePoint. So let's get going. And I've chosen this piece, not because um, um, it's not on the set, set list for this year, uh, but I've chosen it because I just love it. It's one of my absolute favourite pieces of all time. And that's what we need right now, favourite pieces. Anyway, here we go. So uh, the first bit, um, we've, uh, we've got a crotchet movement, um, and then semi-quavers. And what can happen in this is um, you get too far down the bow if you start where you landed on your next one. You see, and I've run out. So what you've got to do is lift after every one, not cut them short, lift a tiny bit, and go towards this trill. And I was doing the resolution of that trill on a fourth finger because I want it to be weaker. But we're going towards uh, the end of the second bar. And if you do it on a fourth finger, then you don't have to have such a, a, a big massive string cross for the next bit. Holding down the second finger here to make the thirds resonate. And they come again here. Same thing with the bow pattern. And I'm seeing this as open strings to try and keep the resonance going. Now here, a contracted fingering forward. So let's just have a look at bar four. I'll play it to you so you, I, so you can see what I mean. So bar four. So when you do this contraction forward, when you do that forward, you're putting your first finger on the F and um, your thumb goes forward by a tone. So that's two frets worth. So when you put your second finger down, your thumb's under your second finger, and then that's a nice extended hand position. So let's do this from the beginning then. Here we go. Um, and on the recording, you get two clicks in, two bars of um, uh, crotchet beats. So you have to come in obviously before the last beat of the second bar. Here we go. One, two, three, six on the second beat we've got two F's and I was doing those um, as um, uh, two back bows so we do the last um, last semi graves of our five um, back we've got a push because I like to have that bottom F on a push there and then come back up again so let's have a look at that shall we Okay, um, so when we've got these ornaments in bar six, um, and you've got an ornament on a semiquaver, you've got no time to do an appoggiatura. In fact, 
fact that your potatura is the note before, isn't it? So you can probably hold it for a microsecond. <laughs> I don't know what that is at a note value. But they're just sort of throwaway, you know, not that important. Okay, let's do the last um, semi quaver of bar five then. I'll give you um, three, four. Okay, here we go. And three, four. <laughs> So I don't know how you found the beginning um, doing this. Um, but I found um, it was really easy when you were moving. If you move too far, it's really easy to play the note as an upbeat. I can't do it now, but I was doing it. And I think I worked out I was moving the bar the bow too far each after each note. So you, you um, after each of those semi quavers and crotchets. So you, you can work out how much to move it down uh, or how much to stay by if you get any noise in in that semi quaver rest. I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so let's go from uh, bar seven. So we're down here on this bottom F. And then we've got to come around here, hopefully silently, not like that, <laughs> like this. And of course, we're going to a cadence at seven, so it's not going to be. Um, it's not going to be a heavy F there. It's just going to be a, an easing into the cadence, um, like this. <laughs> Okay, um, let's let's just do that bit then. So let's go from bar five, and I'll count you in um, three, four. Okay, here we go. Three, four. <laughs> Missed. Okay. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Okay, bar five again then, here we go. Oh yes, I know what I was going to say. So, um, I really want bar six to go to the third beat. Um, it seems quite important. Oh, and also here, if you look at the second part, this is where the second part um, goes higher than the first. So you're accompanying here. Well, you're not accompanying, you're sort of together, but you're the lower part. Uh, the second part does this. And then it becomes higher stays higher um, until the next bar in bar eight. So although, yeah, we're going to the third beat of the bar six. And of course, when you when you play this with the, um, with, the with the recording, I've um, recorded it to a click track. So unfortunately, there won't be much give um, in the places that I would like to give it some give. And, um, and what, I, what I mean by that, I mean a bit of time. Um, so a little bit of time on this bottom F um, would be nice before we go on again. So you can see from the, from the music that it's, um, each part is, is echoing each other. So let's go on now. Um, if we go from seven then, halfway through seven. Okay, so. I'll just play that bit to you, okay, and one, two, needs to be weak as well um, so that means you've got this push bow now on that bottom D which needs to be hardly there at all and then when you come up to your top A you're with the second part in the same rhythm and 
that seems to be going down towards the beginning of bar nine. Um, at the beginning of um, eight, the second part does. It's just like a throwaway thing. And then picks it up with the first part. So listen out for that. Or whatever the second part is. Anyway, if we go from um, halfway through eight to halfway through seven, and that bottom D really quiet when you get to eight. Okay, here we go. So, <sighs> don't forget to relax, there's a lot going on, isn't there? Okay, here we go, and one, two, three. <laughs> Before we do that, I just want to talk to you about the shift in bar eight, a contraction back. Oops, sorry. <laughs> there, contraction back there. Okay, so uh, when we start this um, crotchet at nine, it would be really nice if we could have a bit of shape to that, wouldn't it? And then we've got one semiquaver, just. Uh, on its own, and then so you find that if you don't want to bump that semiquaver, you have to do the rest of bar 10 pretty much down here and work back so that when you get to 11 on that bottom A, you're pretty much at the tip. So let me show you that again. Uh, so if I go from 9. Okay, here we go. And it's really important that you do, you work back with your bow in 10 and you don't clonk that separate note. Okay, so. Let's go together then from bar eight, uh, and it's the third beat. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> track I've done uh, doesn't have repeat so you need to go straight to the second time bar but what I was doing at 12 was to was to put the A major chord without a shift apart from when you get to the, the chord itself not it seems a bit less clumsy to do this because you've got the open string to shift on Okay, and just the notes um, in bar nine, those semiquavers. So what I was doing there was just trying to do them strong weak, strong weak. Um, just the second one slightly lighter. Um, and then doing a bit of a message of rocce on that crotchet at the end of nine. Um, with bow pressure. Turning, turning the wrist, putting more pressure on the hair. As Faulkner talks about in his uh, Principles of Bowing, his fourth principle actually mentions this tensioning of the hair um, to play loud and quiet. So that's what we're going to do there. Right, so now shall we go from, we go from the second time bar. So we've gone, um, actually if we go from bar 11, on um, the third beat, um, and again, when, when we do the second time bar, we we just want to just arrive gently because it's a cadence. I'll show you what I mean. Um, and then the the continuum part carries on. 
Um, okay, so let's let me play some of this to you, probably till about 17. So here we go. This is um, second time bar. <laughs> to do this and then you, you could do that with the fourth finger and keep the resonance going I don't think it's one way or the other really I think it's what you like um, Two to Kule. Um, throw away. It's a descending third, and the bottom of the third is weak, and the Kule comes before the beat, um, and with an ornament on it. I always think about these. This tears to Kule here. Um, it's a bit like a cuckoo. And then the coulé, and then the ornament, and of course I'm supporting the bow hair on the weak. So I'm supporting on the the descending third, uh, on the minor third, and I'm not supporting on the beginning. I'm putting a little bit more pressure on with the bow hair. And supporting at the end of the tears de coulée. Okay, let's go on. Um, so we've got to there. And again, with with French music, when you've got fast notes at the end, as we have in uh, bar sixteen here on the second beat, um, they're very sort of like doesn't matter. It's just a sort of. Oh, go away, a throw, throw away gesture, really. Um, so that, that comes down in, in the third beat of um, 16. And then this top A, which is really important to, to make it sing, because and, uh, and through the note as well, because at the end of the note, the second part's doing this. So we've got a B flat against an A. So play this. And I was doing a contraction here. Doing a 4-1 contraction and getting myself into the position. Um, it saves you doing that. You can, you can do that in the rest if you like, but I think I quite like this. Because I'm there, I might as well do it on a contraction. And it saves doing the rest in the, um, uh, saves doing the shift in the rest. Um, okay, so should we do that together then? This is a second time bar, and we'll go from that top A to practice the shift back. Okay, here we go. Three, four. to get that um and it's uh, it's great isn't it to feel your arm weight on that it's, it's tricky because your bow is such a long way from your body but remember when you want to play loud 
apart from you know doing all the tensioning on the hair, when we play loud, we relax and and have a heavy arm, and it's not as I'm sure you all know. Anyway, um, yeah, to try try to sink in when you get to that top A. Um, and I guess when you shift to that A, it should be something that's really instinctive, that you don't necessarily have to go, oh, it's there on the top fret. It's it's just there in your hand and and therefore in your in your muscle memory. So if you find that you're having to do this, then just take a bit of time to shift and yeah, just just make your arm think, oh, I know where I'm going. And your arm most of the time does, much more than you think it does. Let's go from the second time bar then. So this is bar 13. Okay, here we go. So three, four. So we're quite close to the bridge, aren't we? On 17. And we're coming back for this G and back up again. And what we've got to do in a way is make sure that when we come back to the bottom G, we get a nice contact. And of course you can't be as close to the bridge on the bottom G as you are on the top string. So and then come forward and down to really make that top G sing. And that's the only part that moves there. The second part's got this nice G minor chord um, there. So um, it's this part that moves. And it really needs to sing. Okay, um, let's go on. So let's go from 18. Okay, here we go. So three, four. So we've got these throwaway notes at the end of 19, haven't we? And what I was doing at 18 was to do this uh, lifting the bow again. And the semiquaver on the third beat is an upbeat to the fourth beat. It's not joined to the third beat. This is independent uh, ornament on its own. And then, and then the same here. So in, in bar 20, the upbeat um, to the second beat is the semiquaver before. And then here, it would be really nice if you could do a crescendo. And um, yeah, bow speed, pressure. And I did play around with this actually, and I put a tuck in um, and did it the other way around because this is so much easier on a back. But the game down here on a back just didn't really feel right. So we've got to do this on a push, which is harder. So the way to practice this would to do it would be to um, and then get the fourth finger. Okay, so onto the E string without the ornament. Then maybe add the ornament. the double stop because this is very different landing on that double stop isn't it from here to there which is what you're doing that that needs a bit of practice okay so we're here and again you're just e easing into that cadence uh, there's an ornament on the second part okay so uh, and then this is where it all changes it's brilliant this, I, I love this bit. Um, and the mood is so completely different. 
So watch that fingering. Chordal fingering. Three, two. Holding on the G, putting the one back. If you can reach it, hold on to your B flat. Don't worry if you can't. And then this next bit, I did a push bow and then another push bow. Um, to get the second beat um, on a back bow, and then so it means the third beat with all those semi quavers is on the push bow. Um, so watch out at um, 22, third beat. Uh, well, you can see actually in 22 what's happening. Uh, the bottom two parts, the, uh, the second part and the continuo, are um, a semi quaver, I think, apart. And the part one is the metronome here, so whatever you do, don't lose time because it makes it impossible for the other parts. So if we go from 21 um, and um, do that bottom F, okay, here we go. Three, four. time we have this and then the next bit even louder and then and so I was staying in first position there to um, to keep the D's covered um, here and then an F with a 4 on the C string because we've got an ornament on an F, we've got a trill haven't we? So a 4-3 trill which is not easy and it's not easy on this thick string either so make sure that you've got your left arm right up and support your fingers. Your fingers are going to do so much better if your left arm is up and because they will be suspended off your hand and move more more easily than if they're down here. You can see that's really hard, but it's here. Okay, so should we do that together? Let's go from 21. Okay, here we go. So ready and three, four. is um, when you do that string cross, so from this bottom D, um, um, keep your pressure on when you come round, and then you, by the time you've done those three sound equations, you have to be at the tip, two, dun, 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 because we've got that really long note. If you're down here, you won't last. Okay, so let's do that then from 24. Okay, let's just practice 24. Okay, so I think we're, we're landing on a back, aren't we? And it really depends how far down you are when you've done your ornament. To get round here. Okay, I'll count you in then and we'll go from 24. Here we go, and three, four. No, nope, we we'll go from 24 and I'll go from 24 this time. Okay, here we go, and three, four. same isn't it as uh, the long note that we had back in nine the end of nine where we've got one semi quaver to um to one semi quaver without changing bow um do it on any slurs so we have to stay further down here which is quite nice in a way because when you get to 25 second beat um it's lovely we've got this beautiful run on a um back bow and that's where you can feel your second finger um, coming into the hair so 
let's just have a look at that run, shall we? Because this is not easy, this bit. Um, because we've got to get this really smoothly over a few strings here. And um, and the last note in that run uh, on the third beat of 25 is an F. And I found that it was a good idea to do it on the C string. Because we've got to come round anyway. Um, if you do it round here, you've got to go... Just transfer from that F to that F. So we might as well do this run with that F on the C string. So when you're practicing this, um, if you practice the run on the same string and then add a note, and then add another note, and then we're nearly there. But in the meantime, it's given you time to stop thinking about your second finger. I certainly did that. It's not easy, this bit. And then, so if you practice that, getting to this F, and then do your ornament, um, but then add the double stop. Because we're going from here, whoops, to there. So we're going from here to there. And we've got to hit that as a double stop, haven't we? And we don't need any more pressure because it's a double stop, we've just got to change our bow angle. So bow angle for C string, bow angle for G string, somewhere in the middle, is the double stop. Okay, let's do this together then. Um, what about if we go from 24? Okay, here we go, ready? Three, four. Okay, let's do this together and I think we'll do that again. Um, because some of my notes down here didn't come out that well and I think that's one of the things about playing on the heavy end of the bow. It's, you have to remember to um, to play the notes and make them come out. Okay, here we go. Let's go 24 again. Here we go. And three, four. whether you think it's a you're proclaiming that you finished or whether you think it's a bit more gentle and, um, I think in some ways you could do it differently both times because with on the repeat you could do it differently on in the second time bar and let's just talk about that chord shall we so we've come from here on push bow doing another back here so the octave D's on two back bows then shifting and that gives me time if I hold on to my F to then put my second finger down second finger down with the third finger on the chordal finger I remember when you're doing the chord um, um, a little bit of pressure on that first note not necessarily bow speed as you've got pressure on there, keep the pressure on as you go round, and then you'll hear all the all the strings in the middle. If you take your pressure off, you don't hear them so much. And of course, this um, a minimum at this speed is quite a long bow, isn't it? So you you can't get too far. You don't want to do this and be running out of bow. So that's why I use a bit of pressure. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed that lesson and um, I hope you have lots of fun playing this piece. It, as I say, it's, it's gorgeous. And we might even do it next year. We might even do the other two movements and maybe do this one as well when we hopefully meet up and um, see each other again. And we anyway, have a great summer. And, and stay healthy, stay safe. Okay, bye.